If you have ever wondered what the worst case scenario is for double clicking on a malicious PDF file, we'll show you how to backdoor a macOS computer with a trojanized PDF on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Everyone has probably heard the advice that you shouldn't open files that are suspicious, especially PDF files from the internet. Today, in this two-part series by Tokyo Neon, we'll learn first how to set up an attack and then execute an attack that will backdoor a macOS computer by far showing off one of the worst things that can happen just by clicking on a malicious file. Now, in order to do this, we'll need to go in two steps. And in our first episode, we're going to be setting up all the hardware and infrastructure that, that needs to be here in order to pull off this attack. In our second episode, we're going to be actually disguising the app and making it look like a regular PDF file. So we won't get through everything in this first episode, but we'll be completing this over the course of two different episodes. Now, if you get confused while taking a look at this, you can also check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description, because it's full of details for troubleshooting and Tokyo Neon came up with this attack, so you can read his article to really dig into it and find out all the reasons behind some of the things that we're doing. Now, the way this attack works is relatively simple, but it can be complicated for beginners. What we're essentially going to do is create a trojanized AppleScript app, which is a way of basically scripting different applications to run, and we're going to disguise it to make it look like a PDF, even though it's actually an application. Now, when the user is tricked into running this, it's going to do two things. First, it's going to download a legitimate PDF and open it to make it look like that's what it's the only thing that it's doing, when in fact, it's also downloading a second script and executing it in the background, allowing the attacker to establish a backdoor connection. Now, in order for this to work, we need to have at least two computers, a macOS computer and a Linux computer to act as the attacker and the victim, and also so we can use the script editor on the macOS computer in order to design part of this attack. Once you have both systems set up and ready to go, then, we can begin. Hey Bytes, in 2019, YouTube started enforcing a ban on instructional hacking. And as a result, we started getting warnings and even a strike on some of our content. Now, in order to make sure we didn't get taken off YouTube entirely, we had to move some of the more problematic videos over to the Nullbyte website. Now, I understand this is a little bit annoying, but you can still access the content by checking out the link below and in the description. Thanks for understanding. There we go. As you can see, the agent has checked in. This computer has silently uh, gone ahead and connected to our attacker computer. And now we can even interact with this, start taking screenshots and do all sorts of other stuff. So this is just a simple explanation of how we can make this malicious application. But again, nobody will click on it. So pay, uh, stay tuned for the next guide, which will go into how to actually disguise it and make it not you know, look like this. In this episode, we've set up all the infrastructure necessary to perform the attack. And in the next episode, we're going to take the extra step of trojanizing the Apple script and making it look like a legitimate PDF. Now, of course, we could actually go ahead and run this as is. And if we wanted to hard code our attack within the original trojanized file, we could go ahead and do that. Now, the reason that Tokyo Neon go ahead and split this up is so that if anybody maybe had a firewall or antivirus, we don't want to include any code that might be flagged as malicious inside the original payload. And instead, we're going to be downloading and executing it when we run this attack later. Now, if you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description, because this attack is by Tokyo Neon and it's super cool, but a little bit complicated for beginners, so you can find more details there. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.